So I'm delighted for our next um, segment to uh, take the, com the conversation, which has started with uh, um, hearing Alan's perspectives around um, definitions, broader perspectives, looking at um, going through to, uh, to Harry's thing, to now be able to introduce Oli Kilpanetlainen, um, who is joining us today from uh, Korna, where uh, he has been instrumental and uh, pivotal in part of the uh, API ecosystem. So this is a, an opportunity to hear uh, some real case study uh, practicalities of how this played out in, in a, um, uh, such a significant part of the Nordic uh, manufacturing um, and uh, business industry. Um, delighted to have you here, Oli. Thank you, Glenn. Great to be here. Great, great to have you. Um, if you're going to share some slides, uh, perhaps you'd like to... Um, yes, um, let's start, yeah, start running. Get that up and running. Yes. Um, I'll just uh, leave and join you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. So great to be here. Great to have this chance to have a talk with you virtually. But I'm going to talk about exactly an example from an industry. So I'm coming from Kone, a very traditional company building elevators and escalators. I'm going to tell you a story of why APIs and digitalizations are also relevant for these kind of industry players. I will not go too much into technology, but of course I will touch APIs and what does also mean to a company like this. Before I jump to the topic, a few words about myself. So I have a software development background. Uh, I have been working on different kinds of software products and devices and services for over 15 years, from mobile phones to IoT devices, cloud platforms, uh, imaging, video platforms, and now lately quite a bit on IoT and this kind of heavy B2B digitalization efforts. And lately now exactly I've been venturing into the area of smart buildings and they especially the transportation of people and this of course then leads to robotization access control and all of these kind of things but how do these basically fit together and what's the linkage to apis i make the claim that i would i and most likely many of you would not buy a mobile phone anymore if you would not have access to applications I'm using many apps every day, and it's quite crucial to have those at hand, and you expect them to be part of that service. Now, I make the secondary claim that in not so distant future, the same will be relevant for flats, for apartments, for office spaces, that in order to be competitive and actually have people buying these apartments, they will also need to have applications or rather digital services available. And for Connect, this means a lot of things. You might know us as elevators, escalators, doors, this kind of heavy machinery. But really, we want to play a part in these smart cities. In cities, everything is now getting connected together. We are collecting data. We have our buses connected to internet and cloud processing. Bus stops are connected. Now the buildings, the elevators, all of them collect data together. And of course, we mix that data in order to create something new, making the cities better places to live, making it easier to move around and so forth. And similarly, we also don't want to be in our company just an elevator company. What we want to do is we want to help people move around, use the buildings better. So what we like to say is that rather we want to be a people flow company. And what this really means is that we want to play a part in the building with the users themselves, of course, the people using that space, whether residence, salon, office space, but also link that to solutions and operations, meaning everything that's happening there from the reception, from the services, to the facility management, the electricians, the cleaning people, all of them moving around. And only when all of these work in unison can we say that the people flow is good. People are able to move effortlessly between and inside the building. 
Another way to look at it is, is that we can basically scope out the whole experience of moving around. We can start from outside of the building. You have to arrive to a site. How do you maybe park or get out of your public transportation? You get to the entrance of the building. There's a lobby experience, a landing experience. Then you maybe move to a certain floor. You might finally access those elevators, the escalators. Maybe you take the stairs. In an office, you arrive to corridor, maybe you want to pick a cup of coffee on the way. And eventually you might, you, you will finally find that office room, the meeting room, or perhaps the apartment of your friend. So how can a company like us that builds those equipment really take a part in whole of this flow? That's of course through an ecosystem. And that's why we want to work with other companies in order to have this bigger take and bigger influence on how these buildings are run and in that sense how those digital smart cities smart buildings are built in the future how we now started tackling that is of course then being able to do what i said in the beginning connect get data and mix everything together and in order to achieve that what we are nowadays building we like to say that we have elevators that talk and listen so in short, that means that we are turning our elevators, our escalators into IoT devices. These, these huge machines that used to be maybe uh, not so intelligent boxes, they're now connected to a smart data platform, digital platform, where they can really start understanding what's happening. They can talk to each other. And of course, they can talk to the rest of the building in order to map those operations I mentioned, those other services, the rest of the steps along the people flow together. And of course, if we want to talk, we want these uh, connections to be built between those digital solutions, then we need the APIs that are part of the journey today. And I'm sure you heard a lot of them earlier today and you will hear more tomorrow. But that's of course then the key to making these discussions between the solutions possible. Another interesting thing is that when you work in an old company like this, we have been in this business building elevators for 100 years. Digitalization is very new to many of those employees we have out there. So one challenge I also experienced now that I try to talk about digitalization, I need to talk about APIs, is how to explain something non-physical to people used to dealing with the elevator shaft size and so forth. So you need to simplify the message. I like to use the analogy of a power plug. You cannot use your toaster machine in the kitchen, for example, before you plug it in. And similarly, you cannot use a new digital service unless you can combine it with something else. You can find a connection for your digital service so it can fulfill that whole story. So making, making also the other stakeholders in an industry like this, including our customers, to understand why we are building APIs. That we need to have someone defining that API, an API owner, and then you can multiple API consumers that can actually fulfill different use cases. Just like in a way this electricity plug can enable many kinds of things. This makes it easier for my audience in a way to start understanding, slowly get to the point of why APIs are relevant in this digitalization journey. So what's then this ecosystem I talk about? So our company has also dwelt in the digital domain for a while now. So we have, for example, equipped our equipment with sensors. We can understand better already what's happening there. Is something going wrong? We have worked on predictive maintenance, for example, for several years. We have some other solutions that are really built for certain kind of buildings, which are digitally enhanced. We can control the doors, make it more efficient for people to enter the buildings and have been build building these kind of digital solutions. But what API economy really enables uh, is us to really open up. So instead of building everything on our own, we have now finally, and this is really new for our company, we just published the first uh, external facing APIs end of last year. But now we can really say that all this great, uh, the connection to our equipment, the data we can collect from our equipment is also available for our customers. They can build their own applications that take this people flow into account. They want to understand that the people can move more effectively. So how can they utilize our APIs, our data for that? 
And similarly, we can bring those partners that can fulfill the people flow journey I mentioned. They can bring different services that add to one step of the journey by plugging their solution together with ours by, of course, utilizing the APIs. And naturally, we also need to link to other platforms out there. Smart building domain is quite large. So being able to work with the different solution providers, different platform providers is another key. And of course, the key in API economy of, as well, so that we can actually link those together and build even more uh, collaboration between the different providers. A couple of examples to open this up a bit is that, of course, we can, for example, build mobile applications. So we have persons coming to the building. They are carrying a lot of luggages, for example. They need to be able to get in. They don't have hands free. So we can build mobile application that by utilizing our APIs is able to open those automatic doors. It's able to call the elevator. The elevators arrive when they are entering the lobby. They don't need to wait. They don't need buttons. Has been very interesting use case during the COVID time, by the way. The clear value when you don't need to touch the buttons that others are using. So now we can do this touchless people flow solution. And this means creating mobile phone applications that talk, of course, to these now connected elevators. Similarly, we can work with uh, those third party services, the partner solutions. Great example is Smart Locks. It's another, another ecosystem out there. There's a lot of companies now building access, access solutions, smart locking, smart access. And those can now talk to, again, our digital platform through our APIs. So when, for example, this uh, nice lady in my slide is entering the building, again, they might be carrying things, they might have mobility issues. So whenever they are accessing that smart lock, they are opening the front door, the elevators will know in advance that the person is arriving. They can predict when they, when they will be needing that elevator, when they have finished the time to walk to the lobby. And now they can enter their floor without the need, need to hassle with extra buttons, no need to wait. It will be safe and, and efficient for them to reach their home. Clear benefit to that people flow journey I showed in the beginning. If you look a bit deeper into the same picture I showed, is that this then opens up actually quite a bit of possibilities. The easy examples are the ones I mentioned where we simply call the elevator remotely. We tell the elevator to arrive somewhere. But additionally, a big part of what our customers are doing is actually managing those buildings of theirs. So a lot of our customers are actually looking at a portfolio of buildings. Some of them might be interested in one shopping mall, for example. It can have dozens of different equipment, elevators, escalators. There's a lot of difficulties if they are not able to run smoothly. And if they are managing even a bigger portfolio with several malls, many infrastructure site, many different kinds of buildings, it's super important for our customers to get the view of what's happening. And this then links to also the service aspect of our work. So in addition to providing our equipment, we of course keep them running. So we have technicians on the field who need to fulfill that the elevators are running. For example, in hospitals, if elevators out of use, that's a real big problem. So now with the APIs, with the digital platform, we can simply give that information about the availability of the equipment, perhaps the planned maintenance, the, what's happening with the portfolio directly to the customer's own system. So building this kind of visibility. And naturally, they can combine other services there. Uh, you have a lot of different, different solutions that you need to oversee asset management throughout the whole building. You can now combine this. And the partner side, these kind of third party services in the people flow, they can be multiple. So I mentioned already the smart locking example, but we actually have a lot of robots as well. It's one of the cooler use cases we have with elevators nowadays. So we have a lot of, uh, for example, we have room service robots in hotel segment. And now again in the COVID situation, delivery robots have become super important. So not so many in Finland yet, but especially uh, outside in China and USA and so forth, we've seen a lot of these robots already carrying packages. And of course, if they want to reach the final destination, the apartment of the person ordering the service, they need to use the elevators. So here's a clear use case where our APIs can really enhance the final solution, actually enable those robots to run around. And then we have the visitor management solutions I mentioned. We can also have special 
applications for certain user groups. For example, we have built a solution for blind people with a partner utilizing a mobile phone application that does uh, navigation based on voice. And now you no longer need to try to find the elevators in the building or try to figure out if escalators are running. The application will know what is the smartest route. And it will also, again, pre-order that elevator for you and send it to the correct floor based on where you're going. Again, making the people flow super simple and addressing the needs of this particular end user group. So the point is, of course, that although, of course, companies like ours want to build their own solutions, there's so many options that we open up when we go to the API world. This is, this is just a few examples that we've been able to open, but really opening up data, the connectivity, and combining the services allows us to go much further in this journey we are starting. But that said, of course, we are still working in a small, small subset in a way of the bigger. So the, what I was describing to you earlier is something that we call the people flow ecosystem. But that's, of course, a small part of the whole smart building ecosystem. In smart buildings, we have a lot of companies and they're creating their own ecosystems about the safety measures, about the energy, about the heating and ventilation the lightning setups, all of these are in a way creating their own ecosystems where we can hopefully add value with our ecosystem, feeding again more data and more uh, holistic experiences together. And all of this is then part of the smart city ecosystem. There we have all the transportation methods, the mobility as a service, the city level security, a lot of those initiatives happening, happening out there. And again, if our small ecosystem can play a part in these bigger ecosystems, that's of course where the API economy gets the power. So it's really trying to bring the synergies together, figuring out how this can complement each other. So when we are looking at uh, our equipment moving people around, of course, it's the people that are then based on how you do the air conditioning, how you do the energy, how is the mobility in the city. All of these are linked together. And if we can utilize the data, those APIs together, again, we can create further value than any of these companies could alone. I think that's the beauty, of course, of building these kind of ecosystems and enablers. Let's look a bit to the technical side and basically the user, user side of this. So as you can tell from my example so far, we have a, actually very different user groups also. So I mentioned that we have this facility managers, these people looking at the portfolio of buildings, trying to understand what's happening, maybe ordering services for the building. They have very different needs than those people who are actually using the elevators, the escalators every day. So we need to think about what are the needs for those users, user groups. And then the partners, those companies building their own smart building solutions, they of course, again, have very different needs. So it's quite obvious that we need very different kind of APIs and we need very different kind of resources that those APIs can access in order to fulfill the needs of all of these groups. So just to name a few on the slide is, of course, we have the APIs to get a handle on the IoT device itself. But then we have pure data, data from, for example, the operations we are running. Then we have microservice based services. We want to bring in processes and state changes and something goes wrong. So it's very important to map out the different user groups and what their needs are. And that's, of course, directly linking to the APIs you need to build. And if you look at that from the product portfolio side, I'm myself a product person, so of course, I always like to look at the uh, product portfolios, is that this opens up a lot of possibilities for the different companies. So in the same examples I now mentioned, there's a different levels of products here. Of course, we have the physical products, the big machinery, but then we have service products, keeping those running, what's happening out there. Then we have the digital platform, which you could consider platform product. The APIs themselves, each API should be handled as a, as a product. I think we'll hear a lot of interesting talks about that later on during API days. And then, of course, all the applications, all the users of the APIs are their own products as well. So how to manage this portfolio, you really need to decide what you want to do with your company and where should you bring those partners to bring further value. And that's, again, in a way, 
great thing and of course the challenge when you're trying to solve this kind of bigger problems within smart building domain you want to pull in these different services these different applications and decide where you put your effort and where another company can create more value than you can so that's actually summing up uh, my point so very traditional industry i mean I have to say that uh, after working here for a bit over one year, I can see that it's, it's going to take some time to bring this digitalization to a market like this. But uh, IoT products, the fact that everything is being serviceized and digitalized is, of course, driving that change. And even big companies like Aspring making big machinery, they do need, to need and they can create further business with the digitalization, with the APIs that allows you to go beyond the regular core offering that you had. But in order to do that, you need to both understand where you want to go with the portfolio. So what do you want to build yourselves? Where do you want to tap into that ecosystem? And of course, in order to achieve that, you should handle the APIs as a product. It's another discussion I had a lot and keep having every week is that are APIs just technical enablers or are they products that can actually create further business value? And I definitely believe that they're the latter one. And then, of course, the different customer types, user types. So that, need, that creates the need for the different kind of APIs. If we would only think about the end user tenant style, we would create a very small segment of APIs. But if you want to address all of the different user groups, then you need to look at the different resources they need, the different needs they have. And of course, with the ecosystem, you can then create this further value. You can go beyond what you thought is your market boundary. We're actually really trying to push where our market ends and where we can actually serve the customers. Like in my picture with the smart buildings and the city itself, we can really go beyond what we thought was possible. And then end of the day is of course, then how do we make business? So deciding the business model based on that portfolio, based on that ecosystem approach. And that's really of course, where you start then making the, making the difference for your company, for those partners is how you do, how you deal with that. And that's roughly it. I think very interesting times to be working on a digitalizing industry. And I hope to get some interesting questions from you now and in the Q&A afterwards. Thank you, Oli. That uh, um, was absolutely a fant fantastic um, uh, talk. You can actually um, close down your screen share if you like now. Um, uh, unless uh, I don't think we have, uh, we may have a question on the stage. I'm just going to have a look and see if that. <laughs> was asking to go back to any slides. Um, uh, we've got a comment um, uh, from Harry, actually, who we're going to be joining later. Um, he talked about uh, an API being A or being the product versus a supporting element. Um, and their experience was getting rid of Maventa uh, e-invoicing UI a few years ago, leaving the API live with uh, great growth and success was an interesting uh, case study. I don't know if you... Uh, would like to comment on that. I certainly had some other questions about your presentation. But. <laughs> so, yes, so of course, I mean, I didn't even go to this internal API versus public versus external. So of course, in a way, they are of course, super important enablers for you to build a successful software company to be begin with. Of course, that's an enabling side. But when we talk about APIs that we offer to others, then I believe that's really then, it's not just an enabler anymore. It's even if you would give away APIs for free and your business people would tell you that this is not business, they are really, it, it really is. When you enable the partners, the customers to use the API, you are somehow enhancing the business. And then of course the business model, like I mentioned, that's, that's another discussion is that where you monetize things, but definitely when you, when you open up to this kind of wider ecosystem, that will change how you run your business and should be treated as such. Yeah, and I think you um, you brought that to life um, with your strategy so well with the different, uh, you know, particularly the different ecosystems and seeing yourselves in this, um, both uh, defining but also contributing into others. Um, I, I love that. Uh, you, you spoke towards the end about um, the, uh, the, 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 the communication um, that you're having on a regular basis of getting the organisation to understand APIs yeah. as products. Are you... Um, uh, you know, how, how is the sort of level of understanding growing and how are you seeing that kind of changing conversation? Are you, are you still going back to the basic stuff or are you now um, having the opportunity to have deeper conversations with? 
Yeah, so we basically started talking about APIs publicly as a company only at the end of last year. Of course, we the company has dwelled into that much longer, but now we are really talking about it openly. And I think that's great to see. We are, we are now seeing, so we are a company that operates in many countries, but we are really seeing that our salesperson are able to have these discussions with our customers because they are all digitalizing. It, it, is, now, it is now, in a way, a must to support our customers in their digitalization journey. And as such, it's starting to be also common to talk about digital platforms, talk about APIs. I think they're no longer just the terminology for the developers, the coders, but really also the business people need to be able to talk about that. And I see that's happening. Of course, there are hurdles and it can be challenging, but uh, I think we are going in the correct direction. And I think the same is happening in other industries as well. Yeah. We're certainly finding, you know, the conversations that we have with, uh, uh, you know, executives and so on, it's, it, it, the conversation has changed. So there's a kind of like no longer like why do I need it, kind of I need it, but it's now how, how quickly, um, yeah. uh, you know, what, what does the other sort of change? And, and, uh, and then it's the people who are used to executing change in organisations have got to completely rethink the way um, that they have potentially done that if they've been still thinking very much in a project sense to move all of that, you know, that affects funding and resourcing and all of those sorts of complexities. Exactly. Now, very exciting stuff that you um, uh, that you're sharing. Um, we've got a question on the on the um, uh, chat here from uh, Tuka Hastrup, uh, who um, is a consultant, and he's um, asked if you can quantify the current third party usage of your APIs. Um, for example, is the integration by BlindSquare already in production with daily user numbers? So. Quite a specific question there. So quantification, what I can say is basically that we have opened these APIs and we have live cases. We have actually, I didn't name, name our partners, but we have actually also published the first named partners who we are collaborating in detail. So of course we are opening our APIs to anyone, anyone who our customer wants to collaborate with. But yes, we have live cases. I can't talk about number of integrations or anything like that, but absolutely, this is something that's happening now. We have cases, they are growing continuously, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we will also see more growth. But of course, it's still just the beginning. Like I mentioned, it's it's mm -hmm. a new thing for us, and we will we have the first mm -hmm. APIs only. I'm definitely working on having more. So, And a, a, a courageous strategy to be... Um, uh, out sharing this with uh, um, people who are, you know, uh, certainly going to be learning a lot um, from you. And hopefully with this community, you also have uh, um, access to tap into um, people with, with different types of experiences, which is 